Hi children, welcome to church. We are glad that you are here today. The book of Proverbs is a collection of wise sayings by King Solomon that are a guide to us to help us walk right before God. Some of you may think that you are still little and are not wise like King Solomon. The Bible says in James chapter 1 verse 5, If any of you lack wisdom, let him or her ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given you. Do you have your Bible with you? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that we are able to come to worship you today. Please help us to listen and learn from your wise words that give life. Please give us wisdom to help us walk with you and not away from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, kids. I hope all of you are well and having a blessed Sunday with your lovely families. How about we begin today's Bible lesson on Proverbs by worshipping God, singing joyously and praising His holy name. Jesus loves worship, especially from young children, when we worship Him in spirit, in truth, and with all of our heart and with all of our soul, mind and strength. So, can we all stand up? and with a loud voice sing along with this beautiful worship song. Oh, I know God made me And I know God loves me And He knows what's best for me Cause He knows Every single thing And I believe His promise is true Cause everything He says He will do On a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday On a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday a Saturday And every day I know I can trust in Him And His promises I know God loves me Yeah, He knows What's best for me Cause He knows Every single thing And I believe His promise is true Cause everything He says He will do Oh, On a Sunday
today's lesson is on Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. We are going to learn from this lesson on how God opposes those who are proud, but loves and lifts those who are humble and kind and showers them with his grace, mercy and favour. Do you know that our God loves us unconditionally? We serve an almighty God who is sovereign, loving, gentle, kind and powerful. When we are humble, obedient, loving, gentle, and enjoy serving God and others, it pleases God. By being humble, we bring glory to God and we exalt his holy name. But guess what? God is not pleased with those who are proud and haughty and do not acknowledge God as the sole provider of all their blessings, possessions, and wealth, and all that we have. Because God loves us and hates pride. He sometimes corrects us when he sees pride in us so that we can repent of our pride and ask forgiveness from God and walk in humility and love. Let us look at some of the following Bible verses on pride. Before we do that, I want you to pause this video, get your Bible, your notebook, pens and pencils ready. So let's continue. I'm going to list down some Bible verses. I hope you write it down and look it up in your Bibles and write down the verses in your notebook. If you can, try and reflect on the words. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 12. Let us now watch a video on how God humbled King Nebuchadnezzar from being proud and haughty and taught the king an invaluable lesson on humility. Nebuchadnezzar was king of the Babylonians and ruled over the most powerful empire in the world. God had allowed him to win battle after battle and come to power to teach the disobedient people of Israel a lesson. They were now working as slaves in his kingdom. But success had gone to Nebuchadnezzar's head, and he was boastful and proud. He would not give any glory to God. Then one night, the king had a strange dream. In his dream, he saw a very big tree. It was so big, it grew right up to the sky, and its leaves spread all over the whole world. The tree grew fruit which dropped down to feed many animals. And many different birds lived among its huge branches. While the king was looking at the tree, an angel came down and ordered, cut down the tree, shake up the leaves, and scatter the fruit. Drive the animals and birds away. Leave just the tree stump and fix a band of iron and brass around it. The king heard the angel talking about him. Let grass grow over him and rain fall on him, and let him live like an animal. He will live like an animal for seven years. The angel then said, Why is this going to happen to the king? God is all-powerful, not you. He will learn that God rules over people and is in control. When the king woke up, he ordered all the wise men in his kingdom to come to him. Tell me what my dream means, he demanded. But none of the wise men, magicians, or advisors could explain what the king's dream meant. Then Daniel, who loved, trusted, and obeyed God, came to see the king. I know, no secret troubles you, the king said. Explain my dream to me. Daniel asked God for help, then he waited. An hour later, God told him what the king's dream was all about. Daniel went back to the king. Tell me what the dream means, even if it is bad news. Daniel replied, Well, it is bad news, and your enemies will be pleased. The tree you saw was you. It was cut down because you will be cut down. You will be cut down to size for seven years. Why is this going to happen? The alarmed king asked. It's because you are wicked and do not show any mercy to the poor, Daniel replied. You are puffed up with pride and think you are more powerful than God. 
Of course, Daniel continued, if you repent and do what is right, God will not punish you. Daniel left the king and for a whole year, nothing happened. The king stayed rich and healthy. His kingdom prospered and everything went well until one day he was looking at his magnificent palace and his heart swelled with pride. This is my great empire, the king boasted. I built it with my power. I am mighty. Look how important I have become. As soon as he had said these words, the king heard a voice from above. O King Nebuchadnezzar, the kingdom is departed from you. God told him that he was in control, not the king. Right away, King Nebuchadnezzar lost his mind. He left his palace and ran off into the countryside. He just went wild. The king was blown about by the wind and soaked by the rain. His fingernails grew long, like a bird's claw. He lived like a wild animal for seven years. Then he got his mind back. King Nebuchadnezzar had learned that God does whatever he likes in heaven and earth. No one, not even a king, can challenge him or question what he does. The Most High God lives forever and ever. His kingdom never ends. He commands his armies and the people of the earth. He was sane again and returned to the palace. Blessed be the Most High God. King Nebuchadnezzar was now a humbler man and a much better ruler for it. He realized that he was king of Babylon, not by his power, but because God had allowed him to succeed. He wrote, Now I, King Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol the King of Heaven. All his works are true, and his ways judgment, and he humbles those who walk in pride. God humbled King Nebuchadnezzar because of the king's pride. On the other hand, God promises to give grace to those who are humble in heart, mind, and actions. Pride is thinking more highly of yourself or ourselves than what is right and true. Pride includes looking down on others, being self-important, not listening to advice from others, especially those who are in authority over us such as our parents and teachers. Humility is thinking rightly of ourselves in the sight of God, serving others, especially the lowly, a willingness to listen to the counsel and advice of others. Humility brings us grace from God. So what did we learn about God from today's lesson? Number one, God resists the proud, but he gives his grace to the humble in heart. Number two, God loves those who are humble in spirit and willing to serve others. And number three, God is glorified when we love him and we walk in humility and love. Before we go, let's have a q and I love Q&A time and I hope you've paid attention to the video just now. Question one, what was bothering King Nebuchadnezzar? Is it A, a festival, B, a dream, C, his people, or D, his children? Question two, what did he see in his dream? Is it A, a great lion, B, a great ox, C, a great tree, or D, a great mountain? Question three, what happened to the great tree? A, its leaves were made of gold. B, it was burnt down. C, it was decorated with lights. Or D, it was chopped down. Question four, who interpreted the dream? A, Daniel, B, Joshua, C, Moses, or D, little Leon? Question five, how long was King Nebuchadnezzar driven away from his people? A, six periods of time, B, seven periods of time, C, eight periods of time, or D, nine periods of time. Question six, 
What did King Nebuchadnezzar do after his mind returned to him? Is it A, he made a golden statue? B, he praised Daniel? C, he praised God? Or D, he was filled with shame? Dear God, from today's lesson on Proverbs, we have learned that you are an amazing and awesome God. You have taught us to be humble and you expect us to walk in humility and serve you wholeheartedly and serve others. You resist the proud, but you show your grace, mercy and love to the humble. Help us, dear God, never to be proud, but acknowledge that all gifts and talents that we have come from you. We love you and worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. That's all the time we have for today. Hope you have enjoyed the lesson. We'll see you next time. Bye.